Freddie Franzek. And as we've talked about before, there are many barriers that we can face in harnessing or leveraging the power of play. And when it comes down to day-to-day -day interactions, one solution is what we often call tiered instruction, really thinking about teaching different outcomes at a different frequency with a different amount of effort or precision across a child's daily routine. And so the body of research that this is grounded in is in what we call embedded learning opportunities. There are other links to other videos about what are embedding schedules. Sometimes we call them activity schedules or an activity matrix or an embedding matrix, how they've evolved over time. But what I want to do in this brief video is orient you to how an embedding schedule really is the solution to the paradox that we want to intentionally teach during play. So how do I plan, be intentional, but also follow children's lead and distributed instruction across the daily routine as they play. So one way, if you haven't seen it before, this is sort of a snapshot of what is an embedding schedule. It's They come in different varieties again, um, oftentimes a matrix that is something by something else. So it's often the daily routine by children or the daily routine by outcomes. This visual is an example down the left-hand side of a daily schedule and across the top children at the intersect where Anna meets arrival is a little sticky note and that is talking about um, what the child is supposed to do so their outcome or their expectation or what they're working on but again what you put at the intersect can be very different and you might want to pause this video if you want to learn more about how to construct an embedding schedule the research behind them and to see all the different variations but i want to use this time to really talk about how you think about what is your outcome and then how you use an embedding schedule to overcome the challenges we have about play in early care and education and how we can make that known to people as intentional instruction. So it always starts off with what's your what. It might be easy to think about um, your routine, your centers, um, even evidence-based practices in terms of how you will teach something. But I want you to get really clear on what it is you're teaching because the frequency with which we teach it, the precision with which we teach it, and what should be at the intersect is really going to vary based upon what your what is. So I and my colleagues, um, Jennifer Christian Brown and Mary Louise Hemeter, we always talk about three types of outcomes, common, targeted, and individualized. And so when we think about common outcomes, we're going to walk through who, what, when, and how, and then we'll do that for targeted and then for individualized. So when we think of common outcomes, we're thinking about what all children of a given age or grade are expected to learn. These certainly should be of course, age appropriate, but also developmentally appropriate, meaning the older children are, the more variable development is. So do we have a wide band or a wide threshold of what is expected slash allowed at a given age or grade? So it should not be restricted to a 12-month period, especially if we're talking three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, and on up, that window of what is expected for an age or a grade should span two, three years for any given age. So that's what we mean by age appropriate expectations and experiences. You might pull from state standards, you might pull from developmental milestones, um, items on your curriculum based assessments. I tend to pull from the big ideas for early learning glossary. And then when and where should I teach these? So if we're looking back at our daily schedule, how often should I be teaching these common outcomes? And then which activities are prime for it. And so these are sort of constant and may not require the level of planning that are that you'll see are necessary as we move to targeted and individualized. So these might be things that actually happen incidentally or you can even think of accidentally. They are just so natural and autopilot by our good responsive adult behaviors, how we've arranged the environment, how we're utilizing peers, that these are happening all 
all the time and may not even be in our conscious awareness. It's good if they're consciously aware so that anytime one says, hey, looks like your kids are just playing and you're like, yes, and they're learning and you can list out the state standards or the common outcomes that are being expected when children play with blocks or when children are engaged in rough and tumble or when children are reading a book in shared learning. Uh, a shared learning activity. So you want to be aware of it, but you may not be aware of it in the moment, if that kind of makes sense. Maybe that's another paradox. And then how do you teach it? Again, sometimes we just let kids get older. So we don't rush development. We don't hurry and expect them to play or be interested in everything that we put out. Um, it's exposure. It's incidental. It's child-directed play. So that's the common outcome. When we're teaching targeted outcomes, this is for children who are struggling or when development has stalled. So many people think of this as tier two. That's fine. Um, we just think of it more broadly in the sense of at any point along the learning trajectory, I as a learner may struggle. Maybe today I'm just tired. Maybe today there's more stressors. Maybe today the sensory overload is keeping me from being able to focus. Maybe um, I'm really just not excited about what you have planned. So there's lots of reasons why I can move into needing this sort of targeted outcome. And so what we're really teaching here is a component of the common outcome, one part of the whole, maybe something that's happening concurrently, something that didn't come along in development as quickly. So my symbolic play isn't moving along at the rate that my language and my cognition is. So it's bringing them all down. So I'm struggling or I've stalled in some way, or maybe there's this quality of how well I do it. So I still do it too fast, too slow, too loud, too soft, and in some way that's getting in the way of me progressing. When, does, when do you create an embedded learning opportunity on the schedule? This is in addition to, so now I've still got my uh, layout of where and this constant flow, but in addition to, when am I going to layer onto situations and opportunities that will jumpstart a child's development? So this is a plus. So if I'm going to teach the common outcome during centers, I'm going to also teach targeted outcomes. And I'm going to use uh, more focused interventions, very purposeful practice, scaffolding and support to create that zone of proximal development, additional embedded learning opportunities, so forth and so on. And then lastly, when I have individualized outcomes, I need to create on that matrix, on that embedding schedule, opportunities for children who are um, needing me to reduce these stressors who are missing a foundational or prerequisite skill, something that might be IEP worthy. Um, so again, there's sort of these three things that might be my what's my what, a foundational skill, a prerequisite skill, a skill that um, will help me remove the stressors in my life and reduce those stressors so that I can then access um, the common outcomes. When, again, this is an addition, so not only am I teaching common outcomes plus targeted outcomes, but I am layering onto multiple and varied learning opportunities to teach individualized outcomes. And at this point, I'm going to use very um, adult mediated, very systematic. I'm going to create antecedent behavior or response and consequences. So when I look at the embedding schedule, depending on which outcome I'm teaching, what I put in the intersect may look different. So the steps are to identify what's your what. Okay, am I teaching a common outcome, a targeted outcome, an individualized outcome? This will also help me think of, am I teaching a child or a small group of children or everyone? And then I'm gonna decide, when am I gonna teach? What is my daily schedule? Remembering that it's a layering, that not only am I always teaching common and sometimes teaching targeted, but I need to create these embedded learning opportunities for the individualized that are contextualized, added on to, make sense of, versus pulling the child over, out, or aside. So these X marks the spot. This is where you are going to say how you're going to teach. So for each place that a child or group of children matches the daily routine or a daily experience or a daily activity, how are we going to teach that? And then in general, we want to make sure that our X marks the spot is making sure that we're describing the richness 
of learning to children versus directing less. We want to ensure there's more wait time versus rushing children to get to the next X marks the spot. And we want children to do um, greater things. We want to have high expectations, but demand less. So when we create an embedding schedule for a given child, let's say, uh, versus a group of children, we can have three types of outcomes. All children might be learning how to write letters, including Kendall. Kendall may struggle with parts of self-regulation, and then Kendall may be missing the foundational prerequisite skill of social reciprocity. So at arrival, how can we teach Kendall or provide a learning opportunity for Kendall to write letters? Then as we look at additional embedded learning opportunities across the daily routine, we can give Kendall an opportunity to work on self-regulation or components of self-regulation during morning meeting and outdoor play. And then because social reciprocity is a foundational necessary skill for all other skills to be kind of enhanced and emerging, we are going to create an embedded learning opportunity, an ARC, at arrival, at morning meeting, and at outdoor playtime. So you see that intensity and that frequency that we started off with um, in the beginning of this video coming to full circle. So this tiered instruction is different outcomes that are common outcomes for all children, targeted for some, and individualized, let's say for Kendall. And then the frequency is sort of that flow, incidental. Then when I'm in the messy middle, it's more frequent multiple and varied, and then for children's individualized outcomes, there's increasing number of dosages embedded and distributed throughout, and then the level of precision. My X marks the spot for a common outcome using universal strategies can be much more incidental, maturation, exposure, um, just sort of part of the flow. But as I move up and into needing to deliver focused interventions, I need to be much more careful that my strategy is tied to the component or the concurrent skill or the piece or part that the child is struggling with, the times they're struggling, um, so that I'm prepared for that, and then more systematic strategies. And when I do this kind of in this very complex kind of visual, of looking at who I'm teaching, what I'm teaching, when and where I'm teaching, how I'm teaching, and I create an embedding schedule that takes all of that great thinking, all that data-driven decision-making out of my head and puts it on paper, this is what allows us to work as a team. This is what allows us to tell people, yes, I am just playing, and this is what play looks like in early care and development.